Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to be showing you how to format hyperlinks using CSS for your HTML documents and web applications. So whenever you go to an HTML document or you go to a web application, it is going to be full of hyperlinks. Really, one of the defining uh, components of HTML documents are these hyperlinks. And one of the cool things that you can do with CSS is you can format those hyperlinks so that it is easier uh, for your users to understand where the links are are to understand how they're interacting with the links, to understand what links they've already visited, so on and so forth. So this is a pretty uh, simple class, especially if you've been following along with my other CSS courses that I've done. So let's just jump right over to the computer and I can show you how to format your hyperlinks using CSS. So here we are back at my demonstration machine. Again, I am using a MacBook, so I wrote these two files using text edit. Uh, but when you're writing HTML or CSS, all you need is a basic ASCII text editor. So if you're in the Windows world, you can use Notepad. Obviously, the Mac world, you can use text edit. If you're in the Linux world, you can use gedit, nano, vim, uh, whatever you want. The two documents that we have here is basically we have a link.html. So this is the, the file that will open up within the web browser. It can be named whatever you want as long as it ends with .htm or .html. So so it, it opens by default with the web browser. Uh, that is then going to point back to a link style.css. This particular file, this is the style sheet uh, for this particular project. With that, let's go over and take a look at the demonstration so you can I, understand what we're going to be coding for. And when you go over here, this is the uh, basically the HTML document that I've created. Uh, all I have is two sentences here. Essentially, I'm using H1 with no additional formatting. So I'm using just using H1. Uh, and then in the middle of both of these sentences, uh, I have a link. So you can see here, there's a little bit of different formatting. Uh, so with a link on the second, uh, on the second example here where this is blue, this is for when I have not clicked on that link. So I have not clicked on that link. And so it is blue. So it shows me I haven't clicked on that link. Up here where it is gray, when it's gray, that means that I have clicked on that link. Then what you'll notice is if I hover over the link, you'll see that it has a background color of yellow. So if I have a whole list of different links, I'm trying to figure out what link I'm actually trying to click on, uh, then it's going to turn yellow. This may be useful for things like tag clouds. Uh, so if you ever deal with WordPress or content management systems, one of the cool pieces of functionality that they have, they'll normally have like a plugin or widget, allows you to create tag clouds so your most uh your most used tags i don't know kind of just drops it into something that looks like a cloud if you don't know what a tag cloud is i don't know google search a tag cloud but anyways uh it, it can be useful to a degree because it does show you the most used tags but when you go to try to click on a tag it might be a little difficult to really realize what tag you're clicking on so basically if you make it so with hyperlinks whenever you hover over them they turn yellow that can just make it a lot easier for your users to understand what they're actually hovering over then the next thing that's kind of cool is when i click down so all I'm doing now is I've clicked down. I've clicked down. I haven't actually lifted my finger yet, right? So when the link becomes active, what I have here is that the background color becomes red. So I can say, okay, this is the link that I'm actually clicking on at this moment. The cool part about this is if I don't wanna actually click on the link, I can just move, move my mouse off the link uh, pull up on the, uh, the the mouse and then I'm not actually going to go through. So like with this link, I haven't gone here yet. I, I click down, but then I'm like, oh, is that the link I wanna click on? No, and I can simply go over here and I haven't actually clicked on the link, right? So if I go here, I hold down and then I hold, pull up, then it will actually take me to wherever the link is pointed to. And now we can see that both links are now gray. So let's go and actually take a look at the code that's required to create this. Uh, the first thing we'll take a look at is simply the HTML because it is uh, ridiculously simple. Uh, same stuff we've done in all of our projects if you've been following along with the CSS. Uh, basically, we open the HTML, we open the head. Uh, we're going to point to the style sheet. So the style sheet is called linkstyle.css. So again, you can simply put the name of the style sheet 
here if it is in the same folder or directory as the HTML document. If not, you have to put the full file path in. So do, do what you need to do there. Uh, then we're going to close the head. We're then going to open the body. And here, basically, I have just two H1 sentences. What I have here is this says, this is A, and I do a href. So all I'm doing is creating a hyperlink. So with this, I actually just linked directly back to the page itself. Again, these are the kinds of things you can do in the HTML world if it doesn't really matter. Again, in the production environment, don't do this. But you know, if, you, if you're just trying to create links and they have to go somewhere, you can actually just have them point back to themselves. Anyways, uh, so I'm just having this essentially point back to itself. And then I have the word link. And then I close the hyperlink finish the uh, the sentence and then close the H1 and then open up another H1 I say this is a uh, again I have the whole link again only here I'm pointing this to cnn.com again just to give me a, a different thing that I'm pointing at with the word uh, then I close the hyperlink add a last word close the H1 then I simply close the body and I close the HTML so the interesting stuff is when we go over then to the CSS this is where we have uh, the four things that we actually have to code for. Uh, so what we're going to do here is A, A. Uh, so whenever you're dealing um, with uh, tags in HTML or elements within CSS, one of the things you can do is you can just simply call the tag. So what we're doing here with the A is we're simply calling uh, the A here for the hyperlink, for the A href. So we're basically saying whenever you see an A, so whenever you see an A, comma, and it is a link, then I want you to turn it to a color blue. If you have an A, um, I'm sorry, colon, so this is colon, colon, uh, and you're going to be hovering over that, so basically whenever you're hovering over a hyperlink, I want to take the background color and make it yellow. A active, so active means you're holding down on the mouse, you have it pulled up again, I want to turn the background color to be red, and then A visited, so you've already gone there, I want the color to be gray, and when you do all of that, this is essentially what you get. And uh, again, this can be one of those very simple things you can do with CSS and formatting to make your documents, uh, HTML documents and web applications be a lot easier to use. Again, when you're thinking about things from like the IoT perspective, uh, remember if somebody goes to your page and there's a lot of, it's like an administration panel, so there's a lot of different things to click on, uh, it can be very useful uh, for your user, for your visitor, uh, to have those hyperlinks to be very easy to see and so when they're trying to navigate through and actually try to use whatever a dashboard you're giving them uh, by formatting those hyperlinks in different ways that can make it a lot easier for them. So this is basically all there is to it. Uh, so when you have a link, so you can do colon link. So when it's a link, you can format it in a way. Uh, colon hover, so you're hovering over, you can format it in a way. Uh, active, so active means when you're holding down the button before you've clicked up, you can format it in a way. Uh, and then if it's been visited, you can format it in a different way. Uh, so those are some of the things that you can do with the formatting of hyperlinks. So there you go. Now you know how to format hyperlinks. I know this might seem like a very little thing, but again, uh, when you're thinking about the web application that you're going to be creating or the HTML documents that you're going to be creating, uh, being able to format your links so that they're easier for your, your viewers or your users to use may be a very valuable thing. Uh, again, as I'm teaching you these types of skills, uh, one of the, the, the points that I'm coming from is the concept of an IoT world. So imagine you've got a hundred different IoT sensors out in your environment they're pumping information back to the server the server is then dynamically writing uh, basically dashboards and administration panels for your users to be able to interact with so understanding where the links are basically understanding what you can click on and what you can't click on or where you've been where you can go that type of thing may seem like a very small nuance but again it can be very useful and very valuable to your end users when especially Actually, again, if you have those sensors, if you have a problem, if they have an emergency going on in their environment, if they can pull up that administrative dashboard and instantly know what they can click on, what they can't click on, understand where they've been, that type of thing, that can be very valuable, again, especially uh, in an emergency or when it really matters. So. That's, uh, that's really all there is to uh, formatting hyperlinks. Uh, as always, I enjoyed uh, teaching this class. Look forward to seeing you at the next one.
If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.